Today we're taking a look at Testament's TM510 Smart Digital Multimeter. Testament sent this out to me to do a review on. Thank you Testament for sending this out. Uh, if you're in the market for a new multimeter and you don't wanna spend a lot of money, this is probably the multimeter you wanna go with. This is a basic multimeter, so it has few functions, but we're gonna go over the functions that you get with this. And uh, let's just open it up, check it out, and have some fun with it. All right, so it comes in a box just like this. Nice uh, packaging that they, that they package this in. And it has a nice little carrying case. For the price, $9.99, you get a really good carrying case. It has a nice zipper and each uh, you open it up and it has its little compartments for uh, the leads and uh, for the multimeter. So let's just set that off to the side. Okay, it does come with batteries. That's awesome, especially at the price point. And in here you get the multimeter and you get the leads. Let's see what how good these leads are. There are caps that come with these leads. You can set these off to the side, keep them in the uh, carrying case if you want. And open these up and they're pretty good leads for, uh, they're pretty good leads for the price. They're not stiff, so they, they don't have pretty good memory, so they're not just gonna, you're not gonna fight with them because I know on some multimeters, the cords are a little bit thicker and it just seems like they're always getting in the way. Get your batteries. And to put in the batteries, we take off this nice protective case that comes with it. It's green. And you can also get this multimeter in two other different colors. You can get it in red, you can get it in blue. If you really wanna get a different case with it, you can. Green doesn't really matter to me. In the batteries, every multimeter has a screw that you have to take off for accessing the battery panel. I absolutely hate this. Um, I don't understand why they do it. No matter what multimeter you get, there will always be a screw that holds on the back of the panel. Why they can't just have like a little tab for the battery panel so you can easily access it because when you need it most, the batteries are usually dead in the back of the multimeter and then you have to try to replace them and then you have to find a screwdriver and then you get really upset. Am I talking about past experience? Probably. So we're gonna put the batteries in, let's not put them in backwards. Let's put them in. They're AAAs and it automatically already turns on. And as you notice, I almost lost the screw and that is one of the reasons why I can't stand replacing these batteries in the multi-testers. That's just my beef with it. Moving on, you can notice the screen on it is very clear. And so this is an auto tester. It doesn't do it yourself. You, it doesn't, you don't automatically plug in the stuff and it tests it all out for you. But in a sense it is auto. So you don't have to switch to the different settings. It'll basically do it for you. It kind of dumbs it down a little bit. If you don't know a lot about multimeters like Myself, I am not a pro at a multimeter. I, I use them very uh, once in a great while and then I'll use them a lot and then I'll get familiar with it and then won't use it for about a year and then I come back and it's like fish out of water. So to we're gonna plug in each one of the leads. It's pretty self-explanatory. Red goes to the red input and then you have your black that goes into the common input. All right, and so let's look at the screen. So this does not have a tilt on the back, so I can't prop this up to like kind of, you know, look at it. It's not magnetic, so I can't have this on the side of a electrical panel or anything that's metal just so I can have it hanging. So basically this has to lay flat and it's very light, so it could easily, I can see, be, when you're moving around the leads, I can see it easily getting pulled off because there's it, 
it's very, very light. It's not, not much weight to it. So on here, there is a backlight, which I think is pretty cool. If you hold on the power button, it'll shut the unit off if you hold it for about three seconds. But now if we can turn on the backlight, there is a backlight button. And if we press that, the backlight will stay on. It won't go off until you press the backlight button again, which is great because on some multimeters, if you press the backlight button, it'll stay on for about five to 10 seconds, then shut off. And then it gets really annoying, especially when you're in a dark area and you're trying to do a reading on something. This has a continuity tester. If you have a break in a line or if you have a positive and a negative touching, it'll beep. It'll make a beeping sound like that. Now this should, on my other multimeters, almost like instantaneously when you do this, it beeps. This takes one Mississippi, two miss, about two seconds for it to do it. And I think one of the reasons is because it's in auto mode and when it runs in auto mode, it kind of figures out what you're testing and then it will uh, tell you which, what it came up with. Let's test out a battery. Let's see if our battery is working and see what we are getting off of it. So off of this DC battery that is a nine volt battery, we are getting 7.78 volts. That's probably acceptable for a battery like this. All right, so I have this electrical cord and as you can see, if you can see on here, there is a little light on it. So we know there's power. So let's plug in, see if I can get a reading off of it. And it's probably not gonna allow it because these, there we go. So checking this cord out, we have 117.6 to seven volts, which is acceptable because this is a 110 to 120 outlet. It is kind of hard to test out if you were just plugging this in to a outlet because you kind of have to wiggle the leads a little bit just so you can make contact in it, but you can do it. So let's check out the non-contact and we're gonna take off these leads. And with the non-contact, the sensor for it is in the front area. So we're gonna turn our light on. Let's put our cover on because we probably should be you know, testing out the sweet cover that comes with it. Let's take a note on the back here, there is a flashlight and the flashlight works pretty good. All you have to do is hold the light button right here for a couple seconds and the light will come on. This, it's not the brightest light in the world, but when you're in a pinch and you need to have a little flashlight and you don't have your phone on you or anything like that, you can use this little thing. And it works pretty good. And all you do is hold the light button for a couple more seconds and it'll shut off. You'll hear the beeping sound like you just did. Okay, so now for the non-contact. We want to find out if this cord has power. We know it has power, but let's say we don't know. We don't know because we don't see the light. Maybe the lights broke on it. Something's wrong with it. You know, make up your own story. So how to use the non-contact sensor? We will hold down the, the left button. It's the NCV and we hold this down for a couple seconds. And we'll hold it to the cord. Now a gr green light, if you see a green light, that means there is like a low voltage sensor. It's sensing low voltage, green light. And then when we move the cord to the hot side, it goes crazy and it says H for hot and a red light comes up. 
Now, is this the best way to use this tester or to see if you have power? Um, no, I, this it's, it's a good way to quickly see if something's wrong, but I would definitely get another tester, like a plug-in tester if it's an outlet or um, plug in if you can have wires exposed plug in your leads and actually use it as a 110 volt tester and use the leads. The non-contact, you can, some, some people love them, some people hate them. I don't mind using them every once in a while. And as long as you don't use it 100% as, hey, I'm touching it, it doesn't show there's power. Let's let's work on it. No, you want to you want to double check with the non non contact testers. That that's just my opinion about it. And everybody's gonna say, never use them. They're horrible. But you know what? Everything has their purpose. They give you a instruction booklet, a user manual, um, and it's very well detailed. Actually, it gives you the basic stuff and it. The cool thing is that Testman gives you a three year warranty on this. And if you open up the user manual, you can scan the QR codes. It'll send you to their Facebook, their YouTube channel, and, and their website. So you can do that if you're into QR codes. Some people don't like QR codes, but you get a three year warranty. That's pretty cool with a $9 tester. That's awesome. Um, They'll repair it without charge, any defects due to faulty material or workmanship for three years. You must have proof of purchase, of course. And, you know, that, that's awesome for something that is in this low budget price range. Now we'll go to the next page, safety instructions, and they give you the electrical symbols of uh, very basic stuff for a user manual for a multimeter. Um, function buttons, this is great. Um, you can hold the data, I, I forgot to tell you that. You, If you have a reading, let's say we have this on, let's bring it on, let's do a little nine volt uh, reading itself. I'm gonna test that and we wanna hold this. So we press the button and it'll hold, a little H will come up and we can hold that data to, you know, if we wanna go and uh, show someone or we want to be able to write it down, see what it was, it's great. It's awesome, just one touch button and you can hold the data. They have the backlight, the power, we know that. Let's see if there's other stuff we don't know. 600 volt cat two environment condition. I would mainly use this for like residential use. I would not use this on like a big panel uh, where you have like 480 coming in. Uh, definitely not do that because it's, you're, you're paying for what you get. I know they say that it's rated for certain amounts, but I would be using a bigger tester. And if you're gonna be in that sort of panel anyways, you know better you know to have a good tester. You're not gonna walk in with a $9 tester. It's rated for 600 volts. Uh, take it with what you want on that. Uh, 4,000 counts display. The display, like I said, is pretty well uh, lit. You got your backlight on it where you can turn it on. And it's bright enough to where I almost, like if you're in normal light, you don't need the screen is pretty well displayed. You do not need that backlight on. Low battery indicator, which is nice because it's always nice to know that right before uh, you need to use it, your battery will go dead. <laughs> and which happens on my part quite often. Uh, auto off, this, after 15 minutes, if this is sitting and hasn't been used, it'll go off in 15 minutes, which is great. On the left side here, let's bring this up, bring this up. 
tilt it down. I don't know if you can see that. There is like a little clock in the corner, like a little timer. So let's hold the button down and shut it off. So if we don't want that to shut off in 15 minutes, let's say we're gonna hold the power button and we're gonna hold the uh, NCV button at the same time when we're powering it up. And you'll hear a double beep and you'll notice that the little timer goes off, which is great. So I wanna thank uh, Testman for sending this out. Um, if you have any questions, you uh, like the video if you like it, and uh, I will see you guys on the next one. Peace out.